Welcome back. In the last lecture, we used Lyapunov barrier functions in model reference adaptive control to constrain the error, the difference between system state X and the reference model state XR by a user-defined parameter epsilon. All right, today we will extend those results to neuroadaptive control. Uh, as this being said, if you haven't watched the previous video, you should watch it before watching this video. This way, the current video will make more sense to you. Always leave a comment if you have any questions, subscribe and share with, with this video um, with anyone who might be interested. As you may recall uh, previous, uh, from previous neuroadaptive control lectures, we use a feedforward neural network to approximate the unstructured non-parametric uncertainty where these neurons include radial basis functions, a unity bias. Also, you should watch that neuroadaptive control lectures, neural networks, um, to increase your understanding from this video. They are all on this um, lectures on adaptive control and learning playlist. So here, more precisely, um, delta is an unstructured parameter uncertainty. We are basically parameterizing like this. W is unknown. This contains um, radial basis function. This is the approximation error over a compact set, um, where basically it is bounded over this. Again, I don't have the un unknown lambda here. I would like to focus on the main content. The content that I'm going to show in this video is from the systems and control letter paper, paper and it covers the lambda case as well. And um, you can uh, take a look at this paper. Algorithm doesn't change much, but with slight modifications. Since we would like to also constrain error x minus xr, let's introduce the Lyapunov barrier function, which is almost the same Lyapunov function with one additional condition. All right, so p norm of the error is defined like this. We say phi is the barrier function on the set d epsilon, changing from zero to epsilon, with epsilon being a user-defined constant, when these six conditions hold. The first condition is, actually, if the first five conditions are similar to the conditions of the previous video, previous lecture, if p norm of the error is zero, it is zero. If you are on this set and this is not zero, then phi is positive. Epsilon, when you approach to the epsilon limit, phi uh, barrier function approaches the infinity. Barrier function is continuously differentiable. If you are on this set, basically d derivative of the phi, which is the phi over de transpose pe is positive. And we have this additional condition that is required um, that we use um, this on the proof as well. Basically, 2 phi d, uh, p to the power of 2 minus this, needs to be um, positive for e on this d epsilon set. All right, so um, we have one example. The, 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 the barrier function that we used in the pre, on the previous video also satisfies all, also satisfy all these six constraints. Remember, it was looking like this, which is shown. This was a function like this. It is zero at zero. When you ap approach epsilon, it approaches the infinity and it's positive. It is d derivative or it is positive and it also approaches growths like this but it is also positive uh, when error is zero because uh, that's important. Um, so now, if you have watched, and I hope you watched uh, because this video will make more sense. If you watch this high order case neuroadaptive control video, I mentioned this problem catch 22. All right, so let me Remention about it. It is highly important. As you may recall from the former neuroadaptive control video, we place neurons to cover a region in Rn. So the natural question is: What if system state leaves this region during the learning process? You play, place neurons to cover, let's say, some area, three, four, five neurons. But with standard neuroadaptive control update law, what happens if your error grows and goes outside this region? The answer in the literature was uh, make the covered space sufficiently large, increase this domain D, and put more neurons 
But again, the same question, what happens if you also leave that region? So it is kind of a circular argument, which is called in the literature as the catch-22 problem. Um, using Lyapunov barrier function, we can precisely and rigorously address this decades-long problem without making the covered region sufficiently large. Let me illustrate this in a simple uh, setting for a system having one state as shown in this figure. Let's say you place neurons on this D domain, right, to cover D domain. You can start from here first, second, so this domain is well covered. And you design your reference model, this red line, to operate on a subset of this domain, let's say this blue region. Then Lyapunov warrior functions will buy you, will make your system error the difference between x and xr to get trapped on this d epsilon set and you are choosing this epsilon this way if your error is always contained in this d epsilon region and since your reference model is designed to operate on this blue region then you can always guarantee that your system trajectories will never leave this d set so this is the very powerful and very impactful approach that solves this decades-long problem called, once again, catch-22 without making this D set sufficiently large, which is hard to quantify. Okay, so what you, you, sh you understood what we need to do, we need to enforce a user-defined constraint to the error, p-norm of the error. I am going to give you the main result, the algorithm. I am not going to prove the algorithm in this video. If we prove, proof is a little bit um, involved, but with the uh, proof techniques that I covered on this playlist on uh, lectures on adaptive control and learning, if you look at this main reference, uh, proof of the first, uh, proof of the results is in the appendix, you should be able to understand all the, the all the theoretical steps again um, if you have any questions you can uh, about this paper about the proofs you can shoot me an email um, you can leave a comment we can talk and we can talk about it but right now i am just going to give you the main result and jump into coding this in matlab so this is the uncertain dynamical system this is the basically um, right this is the uh, radial basis functions, mu, residual error, u is the control signal, and this control signal basically has the nominal control part, weight estimation part, and one more contribution, v. This guy would like to estimate and cancel the effect of w. The purpose of this is to um, mitigate the effect resulting from this residual error. Um, we didn't need this before in the neuroadaptive control uh, lectures, but we need it here for the stability proof to conclude. So this is the weight update law. It has this phi derivative, but now with projection operator, this is the gamma one. This is this V looking like this tangent hyperbolic multiplied by this. And V, this is multiplied by Q hat. Q hat has projection operator multiplied by this now this is a positive term which can grow to prevent q hat to grow we also added a leakage term such that you know uh, it doesn't grow um, unboundedly so in basically initial condition for q hat is positive which is kind of interesting we never used such in initial conditions before but this is required for the proof you can read from the paper we have reference model this is the leap of function you can pause steer basically what this algorithm will buy you is that if you start on this e basically epsilon if p norm of the initial e zero is less than epsilon then it is guaranteed that e will stay less than E epsilon for all time with the given set theoretic neuroadaptive control architecture. And the result follows from this energy function based on Lyapunov barrier function and using several mathematical steps, but at the end using this comparison principle, comparison principle, which helps you to write V dot to be less than or equal to some positive constant D1 multiplied by V D2. 
By the way, uh, I believe all should be clear, right? Gamma 1 is positive and gamma 2 is the, are, they are both positive adaptation gains and once you implement, don't forget this one. So let's dive into um, this MATLAB numerical example. I am looking at this x that equals to a x plus b u. Uh, this is the um, unstructured non-parametric uncertainty, which I choose like this for simulation purposes but I am going to approximate it using um, radial basis functions. I will pretend like I don't know the structure, but I need to choose a structure to simulate, right? And here is the first part of the code. Select simulation time, discretization, A and B, initial condition for X, K1, K2, A, R, B, R, initial condition for X, R. So since you have projection operator, you are choosing uh, tolerance and uh, lower and upper bounds for the projection operator you can choose them to be large the lower bound for these guys right since this guy uh, if i didn't if i was not precise let me be more precise q, q hat needs to be always stay positive uh, non-negative definite so projection bound for this lower bound of the projection operator should be zero upper bound is some uh, number i used 10 here and zero for w hat projection operators i just use 10 and 10 uh, the lower bound is not minus 10 in the code it um, code automatically understands it as minus 10 anyway some technical details i choose gamma 1 gamma 2 and the zeta the leakage term to be 0 0.25 0 0.25 0 0.25 and i start with epsilon uh, uh, actually i start larger than reduce but i will ensure you at the end of this video this example will end with a uh, with a surprising uh, plot um, this will be your main tuning parameter. Actually, you look like you have a lot of tuning parameters. Um, just select lower and upper bounds to be large and lower bound for Q hat to be zero. Just give them some number. If you are unsure, give one, one, one. It doesn't matter. But epsilon will be your best friend. Then after initialization for Q hat, which is one, uh, some positive, I am using a command filter, that's why initial condition for that C is zero, V hat and P. Now, these are the neurons that is coming from, I use this example in one of the former videos, X1 is the position, X2 is the velocity. Um, I am choosing these radial basis functions to cover between two and minus two for X1, again, two and minus two for the velocity X2, this is the comment, this is the error, this is the feed term. This is the V and U signals reference model. And um, this is how I apply projection operator to um, W hat and Q hat. This is the uncertainty. And this is the system. And this is for data recording and plotting purposes. You can pause the video. And if you basically uh, code it, I always encourage you to code it. You can code these four segments and you will get the full code. So let's start. First, I am choosing epsilon to be one. When I choose epsilon to be one and implement, and I am plotting here P norm of the error, you see once P norm of the error approaches that this one threshold epsilon is one adapt the feed term increases itself and then decreases it when you go away from that bound here um, yellow is the comment c uh, blue is the reference model state and here is the basically actual system state x1 same here x2 r is blue reference model state for velocity and this is the actual uh, uh, velocity x2 state and here is your control signal now let's decrease this epsilon from 1 to 0 0.5 which is here now you get a better performance and your adaptation gain as you increase increased up to a level of 6.5 maybe and then decrease now if you increase this to now 0.1 once you approach this bond, this gain jump to around 36 and then decrease and look at the system performance remarkable. So basically by just playing with this epsilon, 
you can control the system. Now, why at the beginning I said Epsilon will be your best friend? Because of this. I am now selecting Gamma 1, Gamma 2 and Zeta randomly from the uh, positive interval from 0 to 1. Uh, random command can also give you zero, so, uh, and these all need to be positive terms, but it is very, very unlikely. So basically, I choose all of them from this interval randomly. You can repeat this from zero to 10, zero to 100. Please do it yourself, results won't change. And I run this simulation around 50 times. Here are the plots. For any value of gamma one, gamma two and zeta, when you select, for example, epsilon to be 0 0.1, you have basically, for any simulate random value, you are always guaranteed to stay under the epsilon 0 0.1. These are different trajectories for the p-norm of the error. This is how Fd changes with respect to a different one. The highest gain was around 90. Lowest is hard to read, but maybe 40, maybe 25, if you have something there. Um, but look at x1 responses they are just very very close to each other that i cannot distinguish by looking at here same for x2 they are on top of each other so the system response is very predictable error is guaranteed by the barrier functions to stay low and your performance uh, almost remarkably matches with the performance of the reference model um, Let's see if I forget to cover anything. Maybe I forget to mention one thing. Uh, here, the proof guarantees that uh, basically the boundedness of the error. But as I just showed you in the um, simulation, by decreasing this epsilon bound, you can control that error and you can make your system very close to the track the reference model. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, um, this is uh, one of the nice features of barrier functions and when we use it in the context of model reference adaptive control we call it set theoretic adaptive control because initial error starts in a, inside the set and we show that you are guaranteed to contain in that set. Hmm. All right, never leave the set. Take care.